This UI element is called a tooltip and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create an interactive component like this in Figma. You'll be able to choose directions and using component properties you'll be able to set up the text that will show up when you hover over this UI element. If you'd like to save time building this interactive component in Figma, make sure to check the link in the description below that will take you to my store. Now let's see how this is created in Figma. The first thing we're going to do is use a text tool to create a sample text field. It's going to be way smaller, like 18 pixels aligned to the left, and we're going to go for Avenir Next Demi Bold. Then I'm going to press Shift A to create an auto layout. I'm going to add padding of about 20 pixels and add a fill that's going to be black, so zero. I'm going to also reduce the opacity of this fill to about 50% and then change the color of the text to white. I'm going to also make sure this text is a bit longer. So let's write down this is the text that shows up when, when you hover over this interactive component. And of course, I'm going to shrink this a little bit and then click on the text and say fill container under horizontal resizing. Then I'm going to rename this frame to say text and maybe we're going to decrease the font weight to medium, the font size to 16 and maybe go for like 65 in the fill opacity. But overall though this is something we want to achieve. So we want to have a text field like this that will change height when you adjust the width to make it a bit responsive like this. For now we're just going to set this to 250 pixels and move on to the next step which is selecting the polygon tool and creating a triangle then pressing command E and setting the color of this triangle to black as well with the same opacity and that's 65%. So as you might have guessed this is going to become our little pointer that will point to our question mark, right? So I'm going to rotate this and just going to shrink it a little bit like this. Command X, click the text field and Command V. You can see that it showed up over here, which obviously you don't want that. So we're going to go over here to absolute position and then you're going to center this vertically and then move this triangle over here and then just keep pressing the arrow until you get this, you know? So exactly the right edge of this triangle is gonna, right? It's gonna meet, it's gonna meet, these edges are gonna meet right here. This, we need to, I think, go for like 16 pixels in height and then maybe eight pixels in width, something like that. Maybe a bit more in with the width like this. You wanna make this subtle, but not too small, right? We're gonna make sure that under constraints, this polygon is going to be center with the vertical alignment and left with the horizontal alignment. The reason is when we do this, we want this triangle to stay right here, right? Because if we set, it, set this up to be constrained to the right side, I will show you what happens. And obviously we don't want this. So we're going to make sure this says left and I'm going to rename this polygon this triangle to arrow underscore left. I'm going to duplicate this three times and then I'm going to select the second one and say arrow underscore right. I'm going to press shift H to flip this horizontally and align this the right edge of this field and then I'm going to again use arrows on my keyboard to position it like this. I'm going to also make sure these constraints are set to right and center. And then I'm going to select the third one, rename this one to arrow underscore top. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise and then center it horizontally and align to the top vertically. And then again, use my arrows. And you can see that Figma is very smart actually. And under constraints, it automatically set this up to say center and top, which is exactly what we want because if we again change the sizes, you can see that this arrow is staying in one single place. So that's that's great. That's exactly what we need. And finally, the last arrow, I'm going to rename that to arrow underscore bottom. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise, center it and align to the bottom. 
move 16 pixels, I'm sorry, nine pixels. And then again, you can see that under constraints, this already happened. If for some reason this didn't happen for you, just make sure that this says center and bottom, this one says center top, this one right center, and this one left center, right? So now if we take this text auto layout and do this, you can see that these arrows are gonna stay in their place. What I'm gonna do now is select this text thing that we've created, the whole auto layout, and then turn this into a component. I'm gonna select the top arrow and then go under layer over here and go for a create boolean property. This boolean property is gonna say, we don't even have to fill in anything, show arrow underscore top. We're gonna create the property, something similar with this arrow right here, create new property, show arrow right, and then again here, create property, show arrow bottom, and then finally create new property, show arrow left. Additionally, I'm gonna select the text tool and under content, I'm gonna create a new text property that will say text and click create property. This will allow us to do one very important thing and that is when we use an instance of this component, of this text component, we can now select which arrows are gonna be visible under these controls right here. And additionally, we're gonna be able to change the text simply like this, right? And you can see that um, if we just put in some nonsense text right here and change the size of this automatically, you can see that uh, these arrows function properly because of all the things we set up right here. So that's good. Um, for now, I'm just gonna uh, reset all changes. And now we are actually ready for creating our question mark. So I'm gonna use the text tool and click over here and type in a question mark like this, right? I'm gonna go for maybe demi bold. I'm gonna select this and press Command Shift O to convert this into outlines. And I don't know how big should this be. I think we could go for like this size, all right? So seven by 11, for example. We're gonna create an ellipse circle that will be 20 by 20 pixels. Let's see if that seems like the proper size and we're gonna just do this. And I think this size seems about right, yeah. The fill color is gonna be like 70% opacity, something like that. I'm gonna group this, or actually I'm gonna turn this into a frame and I'm gonna do that by pressing Command Option G, right? So we have a frame and we can call this frame question mark. And what I'm gonna do now is select this question mark frame and create a component from this. This component is gonna have eight variants in total. So I'm gonna create a variant right here. I'm gonna make this way bigger because it needs to be. It's gonna, we're gonna need to room for all of our eight variants. And I'm gonna take these two and then duplicate these. So that means Alt or Option and drag. I'm gonna duplicate these three times, right? So we have eight variants in total. I'm gonna also rename this component to Tooltip. And then I'm gonna think about what instances of this component, of this text component, we're gonna need for each of these variants. So even though we have eight variants, we will have four main groups of variants. And these are tooltips that will be showing the text on the top, bottom, left, and right side of the question mark, which means I'm gonna have to reflect that in my instances of this component. So I'm gonna use these switches over here to reflect that uh, fact. Um, so with the first one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on this arrow on the bottom only. With the next one on the top, I'm gonna have to do a few attempts on that. Then again, duplicate this, and then one on the right side, and then one on the left side. It means that we're gonna, we're gonna have to move these a little bit down. We're gonna need a lot of space. Now I'm gonna select the first variant. I'm gonna select the first instance right here and press Command X. Select this variant and then press Command V. So this happens, but we don't want this to be centered like this. We wanna, we wanna make sure this, this is what happens, right? The bottom edge of the text instance and the top edge of the question mark instance, these are gonna be very close, but they're not gonna be touching, so let's let's leave like two pixels spacing, maybe four, 
right? So it's very close. And then I'm gonna just go over to constraints right here. And now this is very important. We have to set the horizontal one to center and the bottom one, so the horizontal one, the vertical one, sorry, we're gonna have to set that to bottom actually. Why? Because when we change the text, we, wanna we want this component to be glued to the top edge because if we, again, if we did top right here, and then we change the text, so change the text to multiple rows, this would happen. And we don't want this to happen, right? So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna, first of all, reset all changes. Well, not, not all of them, so I'm gonna have to hide these again. Again, move it like this. And now you can see why we need this to be center and this to be bottom. We can now add text and we don't have to be afraid that it's gonna mess up our component. And I'm just gonna select this and paste it right here, all right? So with the same settings. Again, center and bottom, completely same thing. And now we're gonna, we are ready for setting up this one. Command X on this component and then pressing this variant and Command V, moving it over here and adding a few pixels like this. And again, constraints, very important. We need to set this to center and in this case that's going to be top because again when we now add some nonsense text you can see that this will start extending over to the bottom and that's something we want select copy and paste right here i'm going to select the select these two and then move them so that it looks better like this left one Command X, Command V over here. Align it like this to the left side, make these edges touch, add four pixels. And in this case, what needs to happen here is this actually needs to be glued to the right side horizontally and to the center vertically. Because again, if we add this, text gonna extend the way we, we would like. So copy and paste right here. Select these two and move them here. And finally, select this, Command X, select this one, Command V, move it all the way over here, add four pixels left and center, and then copy and paste over here. Perfect, now we actually need to rename these, comp uh, rename these variants so that we actually understand what we have created. So this variant is gonna be called top, this one's gonna be called bottom, this one's gonna be called left, and this one's gonna be called right based on what's the position of the text bubble, right? So, and this one, it's gonna be called top underscore hover. This one's gonna be called bottom underscore hover. This one left underscore hover. And this one right underscore hover. We're actually now gonna take a step back and rename these again, because I've just realized it would be better to organize it a slightly different way. So I'm gonna select these two variants and then rename both of these to top, then bottom and then these two are going to be left and these ones are going to be right. This will create an alert that these are conflicting properties. Uh, we will, we're going to fix that. I'm going to first of all rename this variant property to direction and then I'm going to actually select the component right here and create a new property that will be called hover and the default value will be no. Uh, but in this case, with these four that I am selecting right now, the hover is going to be yes. And this will remove our conflicting property alert. I'm going to also select the component again. And then on the properties, I'm going to click on expose properties from nested instances. And I'm going to click on text right here. And then I'm going to actually select select each each of these text components within the tooltip component in these top four variants. And I'm going to set the opacity, the layer opacity to zero. So they're not going to be visible, right? And then I'm going to go over to prototype, select the first one and connect that to the sec to this question mark. And it's going to say while hovering, change to direction top and hover yes smart animate is out 140 then something similar here while hovering right something similar here while hovering and finally here while hovering right now we could also organize this a little better so i'm just going to move these closer together 
like this just so that we can save space and move them over here and decrease the size of this overall component. Now let's test what we've created. I'm gonna go over assets and I'm gonna search for a tooltip and then create an instance right here. And this tooltip, first we're gonna select a direction. So we're gonna go for left. You can see that the hidden text appears to be on the left side. So that's good news. When we switch over to bottom, it should appear on the bottom side. And right, so you can see it is there, but it's just hidden. So we're gonna, this one's gonna be bottom. I duplicated uh, this component. This one we're gonna go for left and this one we're gonna go for right. And also with all four of these, actually we're gonna have to go one by one, we're gonna change this text to test. So gonna be say test, test right, test top and test left. Then I'm gonna use the frame tool and create a frame around these. I'm gonna rename this test frame. This frame is gonna be 1000 by 600. I'm gonna select these four and then move them over to the center and we're gonna launch our prototype and see what we've created and if it actually works. And here is the result. If we hover over each of these you can see that the text appears on the correct side of the tooltip and also it reflects what text we typed in in this specific instance. So we can now change this. If we now change this to a you know, uh, longer copy, so let's say this is a tooltip text and the direction of this component is top, meaning the bubble is being shown on the top side of the question mark, right? So we've added a lot of text to this uh, component. And you can see that if we hover over this now, it will reflect the change and also make sure it's still positioned correctly on the correct side and the correct distance, considering we've made this significantly longer. And this works with all of these. So test right, right side of the text bubble. You can, can modify these easily so we can see that it's gonna update the text. So this is the final result. So this is the tooltip interactive component. If you'd like to download the source file for this and use it in your own project, make sure to check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. And thank you for watching all the way to the very end. If you found this tutorial useful, please leave a like and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more similar content like this, more interactive components. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.